Hello, uh, I just wanted to do a video um, based on my experiences since I uh, moved back to the Philippines 11 years ago. Before I moved back to the Philippines, uh, the past 30 years, I lived mostly in the United States. Uh, but I also lived in Japan for four years. That was my last assignment in the military. So I just wanted to share uh, some information about the Philippines that, that might help you in your decision to move here or just information that is good, good to know. Uh, first is driving in the Philippines. I think um, myself and a lot of my expat friends that, that I met here, driving was a real issue. It was hard to get used to the driving here. Uh, the first year I drove here, I was super careful, and even now I'm super careful. But it's a big adjustment because uh, it, where, where we're from in the Klan province, it, where Kalibo in the, in the national highway, there really basically is no rules on driving. If uh, people can uh, go the wrong way, uh, yeah. the, you know, you got, you got motorbikes that are always counter flowing. Yeah. It's like, it's called counter flowing here where they're coming from everywhere, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of that, oh, go ahead. Oh yeah, and they use their hands and their like feet. Yeah, they use for, their hands and their feet yeah, to, for, yeah. to signaling. Signal, yeah. Yeah, for signaling. For sign so um, a lot of it is because they're really in our province, I don't know if it's in the entire Philippines, in our province, there really is no formal education for, for driving. Like we're, we're in a, when I was 15, 16 in the United States, I had a whole semester of high school where I had to uh, attend driver's ed. And then after you pass the classroom driver's ed, there's actually an actual test where they take you to, you know, so you can practice parallel parking and all that. And then when you take the exam at the Department of Motor Vehicles, there's an exam you have to pass and an actual test that you have to, to pass. Here in the Philippines, like in our province, there really isn't any formal education. You see a lot of even uh, teenagers, like 13-year-olds, that are driving motorcycles already on the, on the road in our province. So um, you can kind of see how, how that could be a problem with, without the, the, the knowledge of driving rules and etiquette. There really is no driving rules or etiquette. So that's a hard thing for I know for a lot of my expat friends, that's a hard, that's a hard thing because like, you, you know, it's like, um, that's the biggest thing, it's stressful for them when they drive. But for me, you know, it's like, I just take my time. Like I always yeah. tell Dazzle, <laughs> we're never in a hurry. So, because it's like, I'm never in a hurry to go anywhere. So I just take my time. And now when I see somebody cut me off or you just have to like, hey, you know, yeah. that's how it is here. You know, it's part of the, the things that you have to adjust. It's, it's me that I have to adjust and not them because they, they're used to that. You know, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing that can change that. And another thing is safety. And this goes hand in hand with, uh, with kind of driving because uh, they do, when they do construction here on the roads, they don't really block the roads or they, sometimes they put a sign, but a lot of times they don't. And a lot of times the signs that they put is not reflectorized. So if you're driving at night, it's not uncommon for you to all of a sudden driving and then there's a big hole on the road and you're like you're gonna like you know like almost damage your car running into that so you know be extra careful when you drive at night because you know they don't really put a lot of signage uh, you know on construction areas where it's, you see construction on the road just slow down take your time because expect the unexpected is the key expect the unexpected and also a lot of a lot of uh, tricycles and a lot of motorbikes at night don't turn on their lights. You know, I never could get understand that because that's a big safety issue because they're hard to see. I mean, you and they like I said, they come from everywhere, so it's it's not uncommon to be like all of a sudden, whoa, there's a motor, there's a motorbike. You know, where did that guy come from? You know, so you know, just like me, uh, Dazzle can attest to this. I barely drive at night here. Yeah. You know, it's like well, as soon as it gets dark, I'm at home. You know, we never go out at night just because because so many things can happen. You know, uh, on the road. And then another issue here in our in our province of Auckland is people drink and drive. Yeah. It's it's not uncommon for for somebody to attend a party and get wasted and get on their motorbike. So you know, 
uh, it is what it is it's you know it's it's, uh, it's the custom here so you know so you just got to adapt to that um, next thing is like uh, power outages in our province of Baklan yeah yeah for sure. for sure it's like we don't go through a whole month where we don't have power outage the only good thing is like lately the past year they've announced the power outage like they'll announce like this Saturday you won't have power from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. so you can kind of plan around it uh, the ones that really hurt are the ones that are unexpected <laughs> yeah. you know because like you could be sleeping at night and all of a sudden at 10 p.m. at night power goes off and in Philippines like yeah. here it's summertime it's in the 90s here during the summer so it, it is I mean you can't really survive here without air conditioning like I got like me so I'm always in the air condition we our bedrooms always like on air condition so if your air condition goes out at night uh, dazzle you tell you know you can tell you I can't sleep you know I start sweating yeah. you know I have a I have this portable rechargeable uh, fans yeah. and I'll, I you know like I have two of them and I like put them right on my face and right you know it's like um, I've actually we bought a blue Yeti it's called a blue Yeti power bank it's a big size battery so I can read I can charge those those fans also for internet so we don't lose internet so that's been helpful but um, that's that's a challenge the power outages are a challenge during the day if it's planned go ahead baby. Oh. oh you're gonna say that yeah during during the day you know if it's a planned power outage just like from it's eight to five like what dazzle and i do we live close enough to Boracay that we'll, what we do is like we'll leave we know that the power co cuts off at eight we'll go to the beach you know we'll go to Boracay for the day and spend the day that way a lot of a lot of places in Boracay got generators uh speaking of generators i did buy a generator i had uh, we've had two generators but they always break you know the, you know i don't know I maybe it, you know and they're hard to use you know yeah. they're noisy they're hard to use and they, they you can break too. your shoulder yeah you can break your shoulder just to start to generate so yeah. i've given up on generators um okay oh um if you're bringing appliances from the united states you know your appliances from the united states are going to be 110 the electricity here is 220. I mean, you can buy adapters, you can buy those power surges, but because of all the fluctuation in electricity here, uh, it's not uncommon for your the appliances that you bring to break down. You know, it, it, it'll just blow up. You know, it's like you you know it's because uh, even if you put a power surge on it, it, you know, so that's something to think about if you're planning on bringing electronics from from the U.S. or you know from abroad. Um, house repairs the house repairs like uh, since we bought the house uh, I've had plumbing issues where I had to replace like the you know the not the sinks or whatever well when I was in the in the in the United States usually when you need plumbing repair electric repair or even car repair there's licensed people that that you hire that you pay and that they do the job right well in our province of Baklan really they really don't have a license for you know for plumbing or electricity not that i know of so basically you have to rely on people you know you know people that recommend people to you but you know it's that the work you know it's hit or miss sometimes you get lucky that somebody can do the do the job correctly but a lot of times it's like uh they don't really do the repair a lot of times they end up doing more damage to to you know so you got to be careful with that you know hiring hiring somebody to fix especially with cars when I first the first car we had I bought a used car and I had so much trouble with that used car that I had bought, I bought <laughs> a Honda Accord and the air condition never I could never get to the air condition where I spend like thousands of pesos get trying to get the air condition on that car so that's why we finally say we just saved up our money and then we bought the Toyota we go brand new and that was like the best decision I ever made so that's another thing if you buy a used car in the Philippines you know I guess just it's the same when you buy a used car anywhere you know it's like uh, it's hit or miss you know you're you're better off saving up your money buy a new car at least you know for sure the first three or four years you should be good to go if you take care of the car all right uh, next is ATM ATM uh, 
a very common in our province of Baklan is like the ATMs are, are offline. I mean, almost guaranteed, like on the weekends, they're offline. So if you need money, you know, you really need to plan ahead. Or what I do is I always keep money in the house. You know, I always, when I get money in the bank, I have enough pesos to last me a while. And I actually have two ATM cards. I have a Bank of the Oro and a Philippine National Bank. Because again, I've made trips to Calibo where the ATMs are and they don't work. Or, you know, there's a line of like 15 people uh, waiting to get money and then you get to the front of the line and then it doesn't work. You know, it's just uh, a lot of frustration with ATMs here. So it's better that you plan ahead, you know, you know, always keep money, keep money in your house. You know, you always hide it in your house. That way you don't run out of cash. Uh, restaurants, when Dazzle and I eat at restaurants, um, it is very common, like half the menu on their restaurants are not available. And this also applies like even if when you go to McDonald's. Like yeah. I've gone to McDonald's where I wanted to eat, I had the taste for eating like pancakes in the morning because I love the McDonald's pancake. And you go there and said, and their pancakes are not unavailable. Or you ask, okay, I'll just get hash browns. Oh, that's not available too. <laughs> but I guess because, you know, we live on an island, you know, it's like it's hard delivery issues and all that. So, mm -hmm. you know, that just something to, to think about. Like, you know, when you, you, know, you go to a restaurant, you have a craving for something to eat. You, you're craving for like if you go to an Italian restaurant you have a craving for for spaghetti and meatballs don't be surprised that oh we're out of spaghetti you know that mm -hmm. that way you know you know you expect the unexpected that's the thing here in the Philippines you should have two options in mind yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's always does that when she looks at menus she, al she always like picks I want to eat this and this that way yeah. the first one if it's not that one you yeah. know that if they don't have it available she has her next order. Uh, hotels and uh, homes, you know, just a typical home in the Philippines. Uh, there's really, um, the expats, I know some, you know, they're starting to have a hot water in their house, but like our house, we don't have hot water. You know, we, we're just, I'm just used to taking cold showers. And if you go here, most of your homes that you'll visit won't have hot water. And also hotels, you know, most hotels that you'll say, unless, you're looking for a star or five star hotel, then you'll have hot water. But the typical bargain hotels, you know, you you won't have a hot water. Uh, registering registering your car and renewing your car registration again. This with this is with the the the, the land transportation office or like in the U.S. it's a Department of Motor Vehicles. Like when I had to renew my car registration when I lived in Arizona. All you had to do was go online and pay it and you're good, you know. Here in the Philippines, uh, you're lucky if you can renew your vehicle in one day. If you can accomplish it in a one day, like for eight hours, getting the smog test, getting the vehicle check, uh, getting insurance, lining up at the uh, land transportation office, you're very lucky, you know, because most people when they renew their car registration here or motorbike re registration it at least takes two days sometimes longer because again the office the land transportation office a lot of times their computer is offline or the guy that needs to sign off on your paperwork is off that day or there's always an issue or the smog test is closed or the inspection person is not there you know so there's there's always an issue so so in order for you to get to get in you know, a lot of frustration from from people renewing their vehicle registration so that's just another thing that uh, you should know that way you know it alleviates the stress when you, you're already expecting like for me I already expect the worst when that when I go to the land transportation office I already expect that if I go there I'll probably have to go back there tomorrow, tomorrow. again to get it to get it or fixed. next week or next week you know sometimes they'll make you come back another week okay I think that's about all the, the information that I, yeah, that's all my notes, that's all I'll cover. It's already 15 minutes, this video is already 15 minutes. So again, you know, it's not all paradise, like here we're on Pakudpud, you see in the background, you know, we're like, we're in an awesome beach, you know, 
a blue water sun it's not you know it's it's you know people say well the philippines is paradise but there's a trade-off there's a lot of there's a lot of things that that you you would have to adjust you know but again you know it's like for me just my personal you know it's like i can put up with a lot of things because because i'm retired here you know i can just enjoy my life here and Daz and I, we, we have a good time. You know, wherever we go, we just expect yeah. the unexpected with things. You know, it's like... Uh, go with the flow. Go with the flow. Go with the flow is what we always say. All right. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you on our next video.